this, this year, as you know, uh, our uh, theme verse is printed on your bulletin, on the front page of your bulletin. Uh, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Uh, taken from Matthew chapter 5, 14. Can we read all together this, uh, this theme verse? You are, th- th- that's, yeah, let's read it together. You are the light of the world. A city set on the hill cannot be hidden. Okay. And uh, after that, uh, just below that, there's a theme. Loving Christ, our church, and our cities. As you have noticed, we have this line, this theme, uh, bulletin for the last two years. Actually, this is the third year we have this, this line here. Loving Christ, loving our church, and our cities. And actually, each year, we emphasize, emphasize one of them. In, 19, in uh, 2014, two years ago, when our church um, celebrating our 35th anniversary, we start this theory, this three-year series, Loving Christ, Our Church, and Our Cities. And th- let me just uh, quickly um, uh, uh, review that with you. And we, we start this uh, Loving Christ emphasis because we believe this is the root of our Christian faith. This is uh, the root of our uh, spirituality as a Christian. And we need to examine ourselves often. The question like, how well do I connect myself with Christ? How closely do I follow him? How faithfully do I continue to keep my heart and soul with him? And these, Christ- these questions will define our quality of life as a, as a Christian. Because um, loving Christ is the... Is the um, it's, it's the foundation. And uh, we remember Jesus when he about to sacrifice on the cross. He told um, his disciples a very important analogy. He said, I am the vine. You are the branches. You are, we are the branches. And this, this is a picture of a great vine. And I think I believe what Jesus said here is he wants us to remember this grapevine represents where we start. As a Christian, we start by connecting with Christ, by by in Christ, by 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 Christ's grace, we become a Christian because he saved us, saved us from our sin and everything. And so this is the starting point as our relationship with Christ. But also, this relationship needs to continue and to get closer and closer as we grow, continue to grow as, as Christian. So this picture, this analogy, grapevine, is very, very important. So we take this analogy, this grapevine, uh, into our practice. We, we started uh, a daily devotional campaign even though some of our Christians already practice daily devotion, but we want everybody to get involved, everybody to, to, to have this practice in their lives. So uh, two years ago, um, uh, at least on Mandarin side, we, we started a campaign. Uh, we call it joy, uh, the de- de- daily devotion with joy. And it's, it's not a hard work, it's, it's, a, it's a joyful uh, experience. And, and so we, we ask people to, to uh, form little groups and encourage each other. And also we send out emails to um, uh, our, our church people and to continue to encourage people, to remind people, uh, stay on course and um, do the, the, the daily devotion. And we found that um, we're very encouraged to, to find that there are people uh, uh, doing that and also uh, develop. Uh, a habit of, of having uh, devotion in, uh, in, in their life, not just in the morning, but also maybe uh, around their lunch break, maybe in the evening, no, no matter what, have this in their life. And we notice that people, um, uh, they, 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 they deepen their life for, for, for the Lord. And also we notice that 
uh, their, their prayer life also changed. And, um, and not only that, we also learn from, uh, uh, heard from people that they are not only read, read themselves, the daily devotion, they also relate uh, the, the, the online chat group. Uh, through uh, their email group or email uh, network or whatever. So, so it's spreading, not, not, not just locally, but also uh, uh, even people in Taiwan and in, in China. So we're very glad to see um, all, that, uh, um, the, all the changes that we made uh, because of that. And not only that, uh, like, like, like I said, some, some people, their the prayer life changed not only for themselves, but they remember to pray for other people. And really, as a result, their love for Lord has grown significantly, and they're able to Im- impact other people for Christ. And last year, as we uh, move into the second phase of, of this uh, series, we emphasize, we emphasize loving church, loving our church. And as we look at the grapevine, the analogy, and we notice a very important truth. As one, as one branch connect to the vine. And this branch will certainly and must connect to other branches that are also in the vine. So by looking at this, this, this picture, and we're encouraged and to see that Christ wants us to, to, to not only understand, but to really practice this spiritual truth. The, internet, the interconnection between branches, even though it's a natural result of being in the same vine, but we, need to, well, we still need to practice. We still need to put in effort to love each other, to care for each other, and, uh, and translate this into our, our church life. So... Um, as, as we're looking at this, we, we, again, we, we, we emphasize and also encourage our people to, uh, to understand what is a church. The church is not our design. The church is not our making. The church, Jesus said, I build my church. So church is not made by man, but by Christ himself. And also look at this passage, strictly speaking, church is not a social group or even a religious institution for that matter. It is a spiritual organism called body of Christ. Christians are members of this sacred body because, because, God have been, because we have been set apart by God to be a part, to belong to this body. And our commitment and love for Christ must catch up with this truth and to obey his command. We must not only know about this truth, but to practice this truth with love, with commitment. Last year, we have seen people, young and old, taking uh, serious steps to be baptized and as committed by our Lord and then to join the church with great excitement. And we're also very encouraged to uh, welcome Brother Phil to join our church last year, at the end of last year. And I, I don't, I, I'm not sure you know, this is our, our theme for last, for last year, to, to love our church, to join our church, to encourage people to be part of the, of the congregation. So I don't know, Phil, do you know? You're right along align with what we're doing, what, what, what we are praying. And we're very grateful, Phil, uh, the, uh, your action. Action, beautiful. Thank you so much. And um, in addition, we're also um, very grateful to see people making changes in their life uh, in, ter- in terms of the priority of life. And um, so their family can, um, can take part and can live out their church life uh, more effectively, and so we are very grateful for people making that kind of changes. Uh, we really praise God for all the wonderful progress in, in uh, people's life towards a healthier and um, stronger Christian. As we move in, 
forward into this new year, we pray that people will not will see church not just a Sunday event, not as things or activities we do in this church building. Rather, we would like we really like to see people actively live out their church, so-called church, not on Sunday, but on every day of the week. Not in this building, but in every household where Christ Jesus being lifted up and honored, where Christ's teaching being learned and practiced, where Christ's gospel being shared and proclaimed, where Christ's love being seen and felt, where Christ's name being glorified and praised. So in this new year, as we move into onto the th- third tier of the three-year theories with emphasis of loving our cities. Again, the theme verse for this uh, 2016 is taken from Matthew Gospel. And um, do you have a scripture with you? Maybe you can read uh, this passage together from Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 uh, through... Matthew uh, 13 through 16. Okay. I'm sure you can read all. You know, we have, oh, good. We have the uh, scripture on the screen. Okay. Uh, this is taken from uh, ESV. Good. All right. Okay. Shall we read together? Okay. From the screen. All right. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall the saltiness be restored? It's no longer. And trample under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on the hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket. It's in the same way that your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. This passage apparently, you know, is taken from um, Sermon of the Mount. Uh, Sermon of the Mount is uh, preached as was preached by Jesus himself, and it's very important passage uh, recorded uh, Jesus' teaching. And uh, the, this year, the theme verse was taken from uh, from this passage, on verse fourteen. You are the light of the world. A city set on the hill cannot be hidden. Um, The rest of time, I would like to devote our attention to this passage, uh, verse 13 through 16, by asking some questions. First question is, who are we? Who are we? If we look at if we, find, if we look at the passage, we find the answer. Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth, the light of the world. Notice, this is, Jesus said, not our own, not our prayer, not our ambition, not our desire, not our w- not our ambition, not, not, not our uh, uh, determination or whatever. No, no, not from us. It's not, not even based on our, our, our ability. It is God's calling. He's God, Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. So this is God's calling, not based on our ambition, not based on our ability. It is his calling for each, every Christian, every follower and disciple of Christ. When we first repented and um, accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we entered a new world and a new identity. The new world is the kingdom of God. The new identity is called the children of God. And uh, these are not based on what we have done, nor what we deserve, but totally given 
by God's grace. The message, the Sermon of, of the Mount, Sermon on the Mount, in fact, is to proclaim the coming of this new world as well as the blessing and the responsibility of this new identity. When Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth, he implied that the earth is in decay. Not only we humans have polluted the environment, Bible made it very clear that it was our sin that have corrupted the earth to the core. Therefore, the earth is not going to stay. In fact, it will be totally destroyed by fire, according to the scripture. One day, a new, ha- new heaven and a new earth will come. It's based on this biblical truth that Christians are to live out his or her new identity as salt against the earthly culture. When Jesus said, you are the light of the world, he implies that the, the world is in darkness. Therefore, the message is the same. Even though the earth is corrupting away, the earth is corrupting away, the world is ending in, dis- in destruction, Christians cannot live a pessimistic life. On the contrary, we are to live more positively than ever, as light in the darkness, as salt in the rotten earth. This is who we are, not of our own choosing, not because we are able, capable, not because we like it or not. We need to accept this new identity and then trust and obey Christ's command. Last week during our uh, midweek uh, service, uh, we studied Caleb's story in our Wednesday night we call it Bible study and life application workshop. You know, I changed the, the Wednesday night, not just to Bible study. I changed it to we need we not only do Bible study, we also need to practice in our life. So we call it Bible study and life application workshop to work, to workshop. That evening, just last week, we, uh, we study a story of uh, uh, Caleb. And, and after that, after that study, that evening, we came away with conviction to follow his great example. After much discussion and sh- sharing about the uh, Caleb story, we found that the key to Caleb's triumphant life was that he took God's promise very seriously. He took God's word very seriously. He acted faithfully to God's promise throughout his whole life. The reason that Caleb can stood bravely against the bad report from his fellow spies because he trusts God's promise. The reason that he was able to maintain his faith steadfast over 40 years in the wilderness until the murmuring generation passed away because he trusted God's promise. Even when he was, 20, when he was 85 years old, he remained strong physically and spiritually by asking Joshua that he the permission to conquer the hill country, the, to, which is occupied by the giants. The only reason that he could do that because he trusted God's promise. He took God's word seriously. To be salt and light the Christian that Christ intended us to be, I believe we need to grant our faith solid in the word of God, just like Caleb. This year, for Mandarin congregation, we um, we began our daily devotion on the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, team up with me, the Alex and Dao De, 
and uh, and another minister, uh, Matt. Uh, four of us, four of us, we uh, in turn we take turns to do the um, the writing, uh, daily devotion, and um, Susie will um, send it daily through email to our congregation, and also print out hard copies uh, because there are people still not using uh, email or or not as often. So we still need to print out hard copies for them to, to use in advance each Sunday. And, uh, and we, we're very glad to do it. And we are, uh, but but it's, it takes great uh, effort and a lot of time and energy. Um, not only that, uh, in the Mandarin congregation, we also try something new. Uh, we, we try to um, line, line up our Sunday message and also the Friday night fellowship with our daily devotion, the schedule. So um, we pray that by doing this, we, pray that, uh, that we can coordinate the three things, and so uh, people will we will focus on the, on the on the same passage, and all the time. So throughout this this year, and hopefully that by doing this we will move forward in sync. Uh, with the scripture, and also in depth uh, with God's word. And um, also, people will go hand in hand, uh, moving forward together. So, uh, I believe this is how we build up our understanding, our new identity, to know who we are, based on God's word. For each Christian, we, 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 I just mentioned, God gave us a new identity as salt and light. And we noticed earlier that this new identity is in di- diabolically contrast with the world we live in. Therefore, there's a danger that we may lose our grip and become useless to God. And to guard against this peril... Jesus used another analogy to help us stand firm. He said, we are a city set on a hill. And this is apparently a collective a picture, a church that composed of many Christians. Again, this saying by Jesus telling us that this is not our own thinking. This is not our own planning. It is God's design and uh, his master will. The city Jesus is talking about is the city of God, which bears his name. And um, apparently this is what Jesus wants us to, uh, our church, every church, to see ourselves from this perspective. Church, not, church is not a building, sit on a street corner somewhere. And people just draw by and like seeing nothing. We need to realize that God puts us together for a reason. We thought people do not pay attention to us. Actually, they do. Last year, uh, due to uh, family situation, a, a Christian sister that has to go back to China. And this sister joined our church only for about a year. But she was very involved and very well loved by many uh, brothers and sisters. Right before she left, she told us that she had drove by our church, our church site, for many years before someone in her workplace invited her to come. And as soon as soon as she came, she fell at home right away. And she loved the church very, very much. And when she shared that, we are very touched and moved. And uh, also, her story reminds me, she's, she's not alone. I have, I have heard this kind of story many times.
Yes, we are not the only church in this neighborhood, and we are not perfect either. Yet we need to believe that there are people out there looking for a church, looking for a meaningful fellowship, looking for a place they can belong and grow spiritually. I believe we need to take this seriously because God put us here in the middle of the valley. It's not to be hidden. Let's tell people about our church. Let's invite them to come. Let's not be afraid to talk about our church and bring people in. We don't expect everyone will join us right away. But we do need to trust God's word. Last year, our church long-term planning committee made a recommendation to our church council that we need to prioritize and build up uh, the young family ministry. Uh, based on our own Awana program, our, our VBS experience and the young mothers group, we have noticed that there's a growing need in our community. Some of them have already, already come to us. More of them need us to reach out, to invite them. And this is something our church needs to respond because it provides precious opportunity for us to be salt and light for them and lead them to know Christ. In our neighborhood and community, we ought to shine and serve at the same time. In recent months, Church Council has formed two important committees. First, a facility expansion committee. Assume the, the task of planning additional facility to accommodate the growing needs of a young family's ministry, especially. Second, and also the committee, um, a pastoral search committee, assumed the task of looking for a full-time Mandarin-speaking pastor to serve especially this ministry group, young family group. So we need your prayer for these two committees as they see God's direction in preparation for the future of our church. And these two committees are very, very important because one has to do with our software, meaning a pastoral team, a pastoral uh, a staff, uh, and also involved with our hardware, which is our facility. We need more room. We need a uh, building. We need uh, 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 facilities to, to, to accommodate, especially the young family. So uh, please pray about this. And also, um, when, when we um, launch our campaign to give, to contribute, to um, I hope uh, many of you will, 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 will do just that. Not only can contribute money, but also to be a part of the ministry. And um, I believe the young family ministry is the is the, uh, the the foundation of a church, the future of a church. If we lost that that young family, you know, we I, I don't care how 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 strong we are, and we are we are, we are losing if we, if we don't have our um, young family in our midst, and you, if we are not serving the young families in our community. So uh, keep this in mind. And when we began to invite people to come to our church and to improve our um, to, to improve our church becoming a more friendly place, we may need to um, look beyond our church our church campus, and ask ourselves, how can our church make a difference in this community? What kind of good works that Jesus is talking about that we can do so that people will notice and talk about? How can we change and become more outward and be in touch with the community? And these are very 
uh, important questions and very um, hard questions. But I think we need to ask because the reason that we ought to consider this question is because Jesus continued to say, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Christian cannot live in isolation. Church cannot be hidden. God saved us and put us in this world. We cannot just sit and wait to go to heaven. The Lord Jesus gave us sacred identity to be salt and light. Holy Spirit also equipped, continue to equip and to empower us so that we may shine before others. This is our mission in life. We have no right to shy away from our, our responsibility. Let us help each other, remind each other. This is the reason Christ builds his church. And this is the reason we Christians stand together to fulfill God's grand design. However, with all the faith, all the actions, all the efforts, all the good works, all the time and energy that we spend, even the money we, 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 we put in, we need to be very certain. Why do we do what we do? Why do we do what we do? To this final question, Jesus said, so that they may give glory to your Father who is in heaven. And this is why and only why. We have people visit us often. And uh, when people visit our church, I often uh, heard uh, this comment coming like this. Wow, you have kept your facility very well. I said, has it really been 20 years? You know, I, I told them, this, we built the church. You know, this church has been 20 years, more than 20 years. And uh, they're, they're very surprised and they're uh, uh, very amazed. And I told them, as a matter of fact, in 2017, and two, next year, it will be 25 years. So we, this, this building has been this is getting old. It's an old building, 25 years old in, uh, next, next year. But I would say to them, we do not even have janitors. Our church members share the work of cleaning every week by ourselves. I, I believe the, 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 the rationale behind this first was to save money. We don't need to pay janitors to clean up everything. But later, I think, not because we cannot afford to have janitors or to pay for it. We do. We will hire gardeners to clean outside. We, we do. We, we pay money for that. But we didn't have janitors to do the clean up for our church. We continue to have fellowship group rotating. You, know, you were part of that too, you know, cleaning everything. I, I think the, 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 the reason this continues is that we, 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 have, we, we have seen the, by doing this, by, by participating in the cleaning, you know, pe we, people show their love not just for building, but for each other. And, 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 and also to share the responsibility to, keep up, to upkeep this facility. And if you clean, you, 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 you know. It's very easy to, to ruin. Just one person. It takes one person to mess up the church. But it takes everybody to keep it clean. And, 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 and I'm very proud for, for this. So when, I, when people 
mentioned about this, comment, comment, commenting about this, I, 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 I felt very, very proud. And, uh, not for me, but, but for our church, because um, I, I, I told them, people love the church, people love Christ, people want, be, we want to be a part and, and to share. And uh, I think we, what we did glorify God's name. And this is important. So I'm proud. I'm very proud. I'm proud not for myself, but our church, because we did something well for our Lord. Our love and commitment given to our church has bring glory to God. But this is not enough. We need to shine. We need to commit to good work. We need to find our way unto, into the community and make a difference. However, we do not need to start big. Something little, just a little bit from maybe from our workplace, maybe from with our friends. I pray that uh, this loving our city, the um, this goal, this will remind us to, to continue to do that. And remember the reason why. So the reason, the purpose that we, we did all what we do is to glorify God. Not from our own mouth, but from other people. They will give glory to God. Devout Christian musicians like um, Johann Sebastian Bach, George Federal Handel, and others, they often sign um, three letters, initials, at the end of their manuscript, S. D G. And it's a it's a it's a, it's a Latin phrase. S D G represents soli Dio Gloria, meaning glory to God alone. Glory to God alone. And by doing this, they show to the world. This is not for their own. This is for God's glory. What a beautiful way to bring glory to God. And um, I, I just leave this with you. I, I pray that I, this will be something we can learn. Everything we do, we'll, 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 we'll leave behind something. People will see God. We'll give glory to God. Not because of how we are, not, not because of how good we are, how wonderful we are, but they will be able to see God's grace. They will, they will be attracted to come to know Christ, come to know. So let's learn from them in everything we do so God will be honored. Let me just leave the three questions with you and also the answer from the scripture that is encourage each other as we move forward in this uh, new year. God bless you. Let us pray. Dear Father, we are so grateful not only you give us a new year ahead of us, but also your word, your promise, and they are so precious. Father, we thank you for drawing us together as a church. Father, we continue to look to you. We know that there are many people outside still need a church. 
need a fellowship, need a spiritual home. Father, help us to to reach out to them. May this church be the be the city set on the hill. Help us not to isolate ourselves. Help us not to just focus our own needs. Father, help us to be in touch with this community. Father, we thank you for everything you have given us. Help us to be faithful to you. And at the end, everything we do will glorify your name. And also for your name's sake, we do everything we do. Bless this congregation. Bless, bless each one of us, our families. Help us to, to help each other, to remind each other, and to encourage each other. Be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Not for us, but for your sake, for your glory. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.